Let's head back to the days of fun. Just watch the podcast until it's done. Thanks for tuning in to Pop Ninja. To the Pop Ninja Podcast, where we reminisce about the pop culture of the 70s, 80s, and beyond. From bell bottom jeans to parachute pants, from Panama Jack shirts to members only jackets, from Smurfs and Scooby Doo to Thundar the Barbarian. If you had a Rubik's Cube, wore a Swatch Watch, was crazy about M- 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 Max Headroom, or ever wondered who shot JR, then this podcast is where you will feel right at home. Now, jump in the DeLorean time machine and join your hosts, Lisa and Patrick, as they take you on a pop culture adventure through the greatest decades of all time. Hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome to the Pop Ninja podcast. And this is our uh, annual Halloween video episode like we do every year. And we're all in costumes. Of course, my Indiana Jones shirt, I couldn't find. And uh, this is not the normal hat, but it's a cheap party hat. But uh, hey, it is what it is. I do have my whip, though. Cool. Whip. But joining us, we got Billy Ray Bates. Hi. And it's from Scooby Doo, right? Um, yes, Daphne. I'm Daphne. Daphne. Cool. <laughs> We've got the crazy cage in Mr. Kendall Fontenot from the swamps of Louisiana. But tonight, uh, Wayne I'm, Wayne, I'm Wayne Campbell from Aurora, Illinois. <laughs> Party, Party on, on Patrick. <laughs> and Lisa joining us from her evil lair. I'm very uh, evil. Who are you tonight? I'm a gypsy woman. Just a gypsy I'm woman? Yes, I will tell your future. Cool. I predict this podcast is going to be epic. Yes. All right. Well, as always, we've each picked a spooky movie to talk about tonight, and uh, we're going to start with our guests, and I always believe in ladies first, so Billy Ray, you're up. You want to go oh, ahead wow. and tell us <laughs> what your film you picked is? Okay. Well, and lady, yeah. <laughs> it is a 1973 movie called <laughs> <laughs> Once this motion picture sinks its fangs into you, you'll never be the same. Don't say it. Hiss it. Don't say it. Hiss it. Don't say it. Hiss it. What the hell are you doing here? Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! I what is this? I feel like my guts are being rearranged. Touch your skin. It's scaled. Look for your legs. They're gone. Feel your body. It's cold. And listen for the hissing. I love you. Your face. What about it? It looks different. He doesn't want to see you. You're hiding something from me. I know it. King Cobra versus Mongoose. Or is it man versus man? Most unusual horror film ever made. See it. Obscure. If you've never heard of it, I'm not surprised. I think it's obscure, but it's something I saw as a kid. It was on TV um, when I was a kid. And it's one of those things where when you're a kid and then 
as an adult, you just have vague recollections of it. You wonder how your recollections match up with the actual thing because you haven't seen it since being a kid. And so I did look it up in my adulthood. I think I got the DVD, but I think I have it out on loan to my brother, if I remember correctly. So I got to rewatch it in my adulthood. And um, it was interesting. I do remember a lot of it, but basically it features Dirk Benedict a um, few years before he did Battlestar Galactica and even more years before he did the A-Team and he plays a college student and he gets hired on as a lab assistant by a sort of mad scientist who, who then injects him with a uh, serum that he tells Dirk Benedict's character David he tells him that this is going to be helpful for his work in the lab because he's working with snakes. It's all about snakes. This guy, you know, works with snakes and studies snakes and all that. And so he injects him with this serum, but it gradually turns him into a snake. <laughs> so, have you guys seen this movie? Oh, Does yeah. this at all ring a bell? You have, Patrick, I know. Yeah, I love this movie. This is one like you want to stay up late at night and watch it, you know? <laughs> I have it. I have it on DVD. I've never seen it. I have it. I know you need exactly to watch it. That. You need to watch it. A bunch of S's, you know. So it's, it's seven. Like, it's seven S's. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up on the IMDb. But yeah, what, it's, what is the trailer? It says hiss it. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all yeah. Kind of started up. How, how you say her name? Heather Menzies. Um, yeah, and I really was not Robert, Robert Urich's wife. Um, oh, is that? I like okay. Because uh, I really didn't know much about her. Uh, yeah, I liked her in uh, Logan's Run, the TV series. That was that was a fun show, and she did a good job. And uh, sadly, they both passed away, uh, Robert and, and Heather. Um, yeah, they both had cancer. But it, it also starred, uh, I'm Struther looking over Martin. here to see his name. Uh, Struther Martin. <laughs> Yeah, he was on Cool Hand Luke. He was that sadistic uh, captain. He has that famous uh, line, uh, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's That's a great very, actor. Very famous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. his character and also, name. Uh, in the movie, <laughs> uh, Tim O'Connor, who was on Buck Rogers, yes. the older guy. Buck Rogers, and he did an episode. So to come in as the alien Andros. Yeah, he's good. I like him. Yeah. And Red Brown is in it. Red As Red like Red the jock bully. Captain America. Red, Red, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, cool cast members in it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, I want to point out the uh, the guy that directed directed it. His name's uh, Bernard Lakowski or Lebrowski, Le, something like that. One of those skis. But uh, he directed a lot of TV shows, especially when uh, I was growing up, you know, in the 80s. Uh, like he directed several episodes of like Knight Rider and Airwolf and Magnum and Columbo and uh, just a lot of stuff, Beretta. If you look him up, you'll see he's just got a ton of uh, directorial uh, TV shows under his belt. The big so Lebowski. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, yeah. and I also want to mention the poster to this. If you hadn't seen the poster, it's pretty cool. It's, it's got that, it's like a female mouth just wide open and the cobra's face is in it. <laughs> I yeah, remember it's... go ahead <laughs> no i remember i remember the poster even though i never saw the movie i remember what he's talking about with the poster yep mm. you need to go watch yeah. it lisa it's a cool show it but is. you gotta it watch it like after midnight that's that's when it's the best <laughs> you know <laughs> to watch it just uh and you gotta have some fondue <laughs> fondue that would be <laughs> yeah midnight. Yeah, and it's an interesting concept. They did build snakes in the film, and um, one thing I kind of found interesting, you know, I talk about the mad scientist Strother Martin. His character name is Doctor Stoner, which is interesting too. <laughs> But he actually thinks that he's trying to save humanity by um, planning to turn people into reptiles or turn people into snakes because um, then he is figuring it would create a new species with the best qualities of human beings and reptiles. So it's just crazy concept. And, and you would think it would be just so cheesy, but I don't know. To me, it's just, I, I liked it because I, you know, like I said, it was that. Uh, it was that memory of like vague memory of only seeing it on TV once as a kid, only seeing little bits and pieces of it in my mind and then watching it again and matching my memories to the real product. So that's always fun to do that. 
Yeah. It had some cool makeup effects and stuff. And I like when uh, the doctor's pulling the skin off the guy's back. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also on note, um, Felix Sela, too, um, appears as, because they kind of have a little bit of circus and he's like a seal boy he's credited as right. episodes too so, oh, yeah so yeah like you said patrick a lot of interesting people in this if red brown's yeah. in it i'm in, i watch it i watch it i love it yeah right. you got anything else to say about it or is that it i think that was all i had all right yeah definitely if, if you haven't seen this film go watch it it's very cool when I get right, done, uh, I'm gonna watch it because I'm gonna go find it because I have I know exactly where it's at because I don't I I have somebody burned me a copy of it so I have it in like a uh, like a little thing that has all these CDs in it and and I've wanted to watch it I actually forgot all about it I think you've actually said about it once before I I've heard you talk about it like like that you liked it like I knew that you liked that I, I think maybe on a Halloween thing we must have said talk later. <laughs> You know, and I've heard well, I want to I want to give a disclaimer here. Pop Ninja does not condone pirating or uh, <laughs> 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 I didn't do it. I didn't she do would it. never do that. <laughs> no, I just want to do that. And so I mean somebody else give it gave it to me. So it wasn't me. All oh, right, right. Cool. All right, <laughs> we're gonna go over to our uh crazy Cajun, Mr. Wayne Campbell. <laughs> All right, man. Campbell, Party. what is your film? My film, I gotta check the year on this thing. Is 1987's Prom Night 2, Hello, Mary Lou. She took the keys to my Cadillac car, jumped in my keys. Did you see Mary Lou? She, she went behind the stage with Cooper. All right, that's it for Mary Lou Maloney, the 1957 Hamilton High Prom Queen. Never mind, the stupid capo on head, just give me the crown. This year, someone special is coming back to Hamilton High for prom night. Mary Lou Maloney. Mary Lou! She's been dead for 30 years. Now she's going to use Vicky's body to get her crown back. Good morning, prom queen. Only nominated, not the winner. Not yet. Mary Lou Maloney has come back. Vicky. Wrong. You came with me. She will enter your body and possess you. See you later, alligator. On revenge. Another prom queen hopeful bites the big one. Cracking up? I don't know what's happening to me. She's dead. <laughs> Dad, you know something about this, don't you? Sucker. No. See oh. you later, alligator. Oh. She took the keys to my Cadillac car. They're playing her song. <laughs> Hello, Mary Lou, prom night two. I know you guys are excited. I can see your, your faces. <laughs> I have I not was, seen it. Sorry. I was originally going to do prom night, which starred Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen in one of his last serious roles before he went full comedy. But uh, actually, Pop Ninja covered that movie a while back. So I, I went ahead and... I love it. <laughs> I jumped over to prom night two. Now the, the weird thing about prom night two is other than it being at the same high school as prom night, they're two entirely different films. Uh, the first prom night was just a traditional slasher film where someone was going around stabbing or killing high school students. Uh, and I kind of sympathize with the poor slasher because the slasher had reasons for why they were doing what they were doing. But in prom night two, uh, the film starts out with uh, a young lady in confession, and she's uh, telling the priest all of her sins. And then at the end, instead of asking for absolution, she says she loved every minute of it. And then we are magically transported to 1957. And Mary Lou is there with her boyfriend, and they're at the, the prom, and she's ready to become prom queen. Uh, her her, uh, her uh, 
date is uh, Billy Nordham. And uh, Billy goes to get drinks for, for him and her. And when he walks away, she goes and finds another guy, starts fooling around with him behind the stage. Billy catches him, gets mad. And uh, he, he comes across a cherry bomb that some nerdy wells were going to blow up, but they got freaked out when the principal walked in on them. So they threw it in the trash. Well, he takes that cherry bomb and throws it on her whenever they're about to crown her. She does not get the crown. That's, that's a key point in the movie. She does not get the crown on her head. Well, he throws this cherry bomb thinking it's going to stink up the place, but it catches her dress on fire. She's engulfed in flames and burns to death on the stage. And the guy she was messing around with attempted to save her, but at the last minute, it's like the flames got too high, so he backed off, and he just cried on the side of the stage while she burned to death. Then we jump 30 years into the future to 1987, and uh, there's a young girl named Vicki Carpenter. She's sweet. She's virginal. She's the perfect little blonde wonder girl, and uh, she starts having these bizarre visions, and the principal is Billy Nordham, and she's dating his son, but she starts having all these strange visions People start dying at the school, and then Mary Lou comes back and possesses Vicky and just goes on a killing spree. And then, of course, we get to the prom. I'm not going to spoil it, but we get to the prom, and uh, Mary Lou wants her crown. And that's pretty much the movie. Uh, it's, it's a supernatural thriller. Uh, there's no slashing in it at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually gets stabbed, but... Uh, it's a really cool movie, and it stars um, Wendy Lyon is Vicky. She was a, she's a Canadian actress. She was in uh, Anne of Green Gables. She was uh, in a, a bunch of Canadian television series, and uh, she ended up on um, she was in Sailor, Sailor Moon, the, the animated the anime Sailor Moon. I don't I've never watched that one, but I'm familiar with it. I know of it. She was in that anime. And it also stars uh, Lisa Schrage. I think that's how you say her last name is Mary Lou. And other than this film, she didn't do a whole lot. But for me and Patrick, I know Patrick will appreciate this next guy. Michael Ironside oh, yeah. stars as the principal, as principal Billy Nordham. Oh, Great Michael actor. Ironside is an amazing character actor. He was in V. He, he played Ham on V. Ham Tyler, yeah. He's always a tough guy. He's always... Um, He's never really in charge. He's always like the second in charge. He's the guy that actually executes. Except everything. for Sequest, he's in charge of the Sequest. Well, yeah, he was on Sequest for a little while there. He uh he replaced uh was it uh Roy Scheider. Roy Scheider, yeah, he replaced Roy Scheider on Sequest ESV, and uh, it's a good movie. The special effects are amazing. They're all practical. Uh, this was prior to CGI. Well, I take that back. They do have one electrocution scene that's not that good. But uh, at one point, uh, Mary Lou comes out of a body. I'm not going to say whose body, but she comes out of a body. And uh, she's like this decomposing skeleton creature. And then she forms into Mary Lou. And it's, it's a really well done sequence. Uh, the, the guy who did that was Jim Doyle, who worked on the first Nightmare on Elm Street film. And uh, if you watch this movie, you'll see a whole lot of uh, callbacks to Carrie. Oh yeah, Halloween, carry a lot. Nightmare on Elm Street. I see a hand going up. <laughs> yeah, like it reminds me of uh, Peggy Sue got married and Carrie. You put them in a blender and like that's the movie. Again. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, and then you know there's some dream sequences in there. My favorite sequence in this entire film, if you haven't seen it, is the chalkboard sequence. Uh, uh, Vicky, somebody writes "Help me" on the chalkboard. You just see the words appear. And Vicky touches the chalkboard and she gets sucked into it. And you see these black hands just like fighting with her. And it's like she's in a swimming pool. It took them five days to shoot that scene. And it cost $2,000 an hour to do it. But it came out amazing. It looks great. Uh, that's probably my, my favorite sequence of all. The, the zombified Mary Lou appearing is a close second. And uh, it's, it's a really fun film. Uh, have you all seen it? Has anyone seen it? Oh, yeah. I saw it like once a long, um, some years ago with some friends and I think it was late at night and we probably watched two other movies before that one and I was probably like <laughs> half asleep. So I remember that the, there was like to be a, wasn't there like a car wreck or something in it too? Is there a car wreck in it? No, there's not a car wreck in that one. Um, now there was a third, uh, there were a third, there was a third and fourth one and then a remake of the original. 
I haven't seen any of those. I've only seen oh. the original film and the the sequel. So prom night, like the original prom night, is like one of my favorites. I love. I've seen it a hundred times. You know, I know I watched. I know I know exactly who I watched prom night two with, and because it she loved that movie, and it was a, a friend of mine that loved 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 that movie, just like you're talking about. But and I can remember the um, like cover art, you know, of of the the poster like for it too. Um, yeah, she she's she's standing there with her crown on and everything, and she's got that wicked smile on her face. Yeah, it's a real cool poster. Uh, Mary Lou is a good character, uh, but her her powers and how you stop her and all that it's never really defined. It just kind of happens. And uh, I, I now want to see the third one because she's in the third one. The fourth one has nothing to do with the second or third movie or the first movie. Uh, it doesn't even take place in the same school. But uh, originally, this film was was uh, supposed to be a standalone movie. But because Prom Night did so well, this company it was a Canadian production company. They're like, hey, let's slap Prom Night on here and just ride that train and see what happens. And it's completely different from that first film. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say the, uh, the writer of this, I think his name is Ron Oliver. I think so. He, I'm not if sure. If you look him up, it's weird that he wrote this horror movie because he's got like, 20 Hallmark Christmas movies that he's written and a bunch of uh, rom-coms. So this one's kind of strange, you know, out of what he usually does. So Well, you could you could say this one's a, a rom-com because, I mean, there's a little romance and comedy thrown in there. So. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's some pretty cool death scenes in this movie. I don't want to ruin it. One of them involves a crucifix. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. But uh, there's some really cool death scenes. And, uh, and like I said, the, the whole, oh, there's also a rocking horse with a, that was wicked. Oh yeah. With a gory tongue. It is, yeah. it, and he's got demonic eyes. And it's uh, like one of those horses off of a, a carousel. Yeah. And but the girl has her in her room by her bed and it, it yeah. almost, it comes to life. It's, it's got, it's just weird. weird. Yeah. Her, her bed sheets yeah. like pull down tight on her. And you see these hands come up from underneath and they start fighting with her. And then the horse's eyes turn demonic and it sticks this gooey tongue out at her. And then later on in the movie, she's riding the horse. She just, well, she's not riding it. She's laying on it. Mary Lou is. And just laying on the horse and it's just flicking its tongue. It's, it's got some bizarre dream sequences in it, but it's, it's a really good movie. Yeah. All right. Give it up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, Lisa, you ready to talk about yours? Me? Okay. Um, my movie is Halloween, the original. It's 1978. Halloween night. A small American town. 15 years ago. <laughs> Halloween. I spent eight years trying to reach him, and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. I think he'll come back. Exploring uncharted territory. And totally charted. And just talk. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm -hmm. The only reason she babysits is to have a Halloween.
And if you haven't seen it, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> where you've been on this planet? Because I mean, they just they just had the Halloween ends. And so that's why I thought, I don't know that we've ever covered Halloween, the first one ever. I know I Probably. talked about Halloween. Well, I know we did Halloween. I did Halloween three on our first episode. So I'm going backwards. Well, you know, like, I'm, yeah. I'm starting, uh, I've started in the middle and now I'm at the beginning. But yeah, but and, and then it's ending, you know, already, you know, going on in, in right now. But um, I, I, I don't have any desire to see the new one. But pe I don't know if you guys have, 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 have talked to people that have had you, you saw it. Saw yeah, I saw it last weekend. Halloween ends. Yeah, I yeah. saw it. I saw it too. You saw it? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I liked it more than the one before this, like a year or two ago. Um, I liked this one a little bit more. And um, it's unusual. You know, I went into it with knowing I had read a quote by Jamie Lee Curtis saying that fans were going to hate this movie. And so that was on my mind through the whole movie. Okay, so why am I going to hate this movie? Why am I going to hate this movie? And I won't spoil it, but yeah. I mean, I, I didn't hate it though. <laughs> I thought it was you know, good. Everybody that I talked to, all the men said they they hated it and all the women said they kind of liked it. So I don't know what that means, but that's <laughs> the feedback that I've, I've got from people, that's what they're saying. Well, so, I'll tell you that the, the kid who played like basically the lead, um, a lead role in it is on the um, Hulu series, Hardy Boys. He plays Frank Hardy on that. Rowan, Rowan Campbell, I think is his name. Excellent, really good actor. I and Hardy Boys, I didn't know that. Oh, it's a great that. series. It's a great series. I'm watching the second season right now, which was released earlier. Awesome. But yeah, he plays the older Hardy brother and he's got the, like the front and center role in how. Halloween ends. So just a fabulous job. Really good job. He's the guy. He, he wears. I'm not going to give anything away either. But he's got the glasses on, right? Is that the one you're talking about? At the about? beginning. At the yeah. beginning, and then he loses he, his glasses. And you film. Yeah. Yeah. He reminded me of a young William Ragsdale from Fright oh. Night. Okay. If you, if, if you, with those glasses on, he looked like William Ragsdale. I don't know why he popped <laughs> into my head, but I was like, Hey, that's, that's, that's a Herman's head. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, to me, they had two stories going on in that movie. Yes. Yeah. And one of them could have been done a lot better in my opinion. And then the other one needed to be done more. We needed more of that particular story. And I know it makes no sense if you haven't watched it. It might yeah. not make any sense if you watched it either, the way I'm describing <laughs> it, but. Um, well, I heard it's very character driven and I'm like, well, there can't, there's only like two major characters. There's Laurie Stroud and there's Michael Myers. So it's like, it's gotta be them, you know? So it may, well, is it more background? Yeah, and this kid, Myers, this kid that? being thrown in there. Yeah, you do see Michael Myers, but this kid being thrown in there, I would consider that, you know, like he was another lead character yeah. that you, you follow through and, He's presented to you in a way where you could you could feel strongly about him um, either negatively or positively, and I just really thought the movie it was an interesting character to me. He yeah he he put on a good performance because he he had to go through a huge range of emotions and everything yeah. else because his his character changes completely mm -hmm. throughout yeah. this movie. <laughs> that is so i don't know who he's playing or what he's doing or what he has to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know you better yeah, go see the movie lisa you, know, you I, just better I, go I, see it he's a janitor in the boiler room at the school his name is fred <laughs> <laughs> i don't know who you're talking about now <laughs> but yeah i um you know lisa i agree about the original halloween i'm glad that we're talking about it because that's always been my favorite the first and second because they go together really they kind of they're so consecutive but um i've always loved always been partial to the first one just the tone that it captures the emotion when you see the kids trigger treat looking out the window and all of that it just it's the best to me oh i love i love halloween part two also part two too you know but um <laughs> it's supposed to take place like on the very same night like the ne the night that it, that i mean within that night that same like yeah. and it's a year later you know so like that's kind of you know but um yeah uh you know the first one the original i've watched it probably twice already because it's it, it's on like every night just about the whole month of october you change a channel it's on one cha some channel or another you know and then i always like start october with it and like end like on halloween with it you know because it's playing like on every channel on halloween night you know but it's 
I, and I actually saw the 35th the anniversary of it in the, I think it was the 30th. Yeah, because this is the 44th, 44th year of Halloween, 44 years from the big first one. Wow. And uh, I went to the 35th um, anniversary of it in the movie theater. They had replayed the original Halloween. And we drove like to go see it. And I thought it would be packed and there'd be like millions of people there, but it was like just a couple people in the theater. But I, I loved watching it because I mean, in 78, I was 10, you know, and I remember my parents went to see it at the movie theater. And then my mom told me about it. And I had a mental picture of this movie, you know, and this guy at the end, you know, like they shoot him and he just, and he gets away. And I just had it I, before I ever saw it. I knew what it was. I, I had, it almost lined up to my, like you said, Billy Ray about how you had a, a, a mental like uh, idea of these scenes from when you're a kid. And then like you see it as an adult and you wanna know if it's like the same effect or the same things or, you know, what, you know, if you, your memory is, is if has failed you completely. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of a whole different movie. Like, you know, you think there's a car wreck in there somewhere and it's some other movie. Yeah, so like, you know, uh, but yeah, I love Halloween. I love it. And it's, it's just a classic. I mean, it's like, um, you know, like and I it, I had a house the house before I had the but the evil lair before my evil lair yeah. evil lair number one you know it looked just like the Michael Myers house I mean like just like it I mean per, like, just oh, wow. like um and so I mean we when, every time I see the scene of it I'm like that's my house you know so yeah I had another I, I I've always lived in an evil lair so <laughs> So uh, you, you guys, you, do you love it? I mean, do you, you love Halloween? Oh, yeah, Halloween's one of my favorite movies. And my favorite scene in that movie is the death of Linda Vanderklok. But the reason that's my favorite scene is because oh, PJ oh, Souls. Oh, like who? <laughs> it's PJ Souls. If I say PJ Souls, maybe. Her last name, I didn't even know she had a last name in the movie. Yeah. I saw her, I, I, I saw an interview with her years ago. And, uh, you know, in that scene, you know, that's the famous scene where he's got the ghost suit on. Over I his, love that. Yes, the with the glasses. On. Oh, my gosh. Well, he's I love he's that. choking her with the phone cord. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're telling her, okay, you're dying. She's, she's got that direction. She's, ah, ah, and she just kind of goes down. Then she comes back up, ah, ah, and she goes back down. The reason she did that was because she said, uh, PJ said she knew that that was it for her in the movie. She was done. So she wanted as much screen time, uh, screen time as possible. So she kept popping back up and ah, 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 doing that so she could be on camera. Oh, yeah. So she could imprint on people. And, uh, and she did. I mean, I, I love PJ Soul. She's one, one of my favorite actresses. Uh, you know, Rock and Roll High School, um, uh, Stripes. I mean, just so many movies she's been in. PJ's yeah. cool. And, and that, that's the reason that that scene is my favorite, just because of her description of it, why it took her so long to die. <laughs> well, and she's topless. <laughs> that scene, unedited version yeah so yeah but um yeah that scene with him standing in the doorway like uh just as like when i first saw this i'm sure it was on hbo so um seeing that like you know for the first time being younger you know that terrified me like and there was no blood there was no nothing it's just like you don't know who's under there you know i mean and you don't really know like what he looks like ever so like you just that is scary to me you don't have to like put all this blood and gore and stuff like to make it suspenseful and creepy and scary and just knowing somebody's lurking around looking in at, at you or peeking around you know whatever that that's scary to me yeah and the yeah. fact that they've always hidden his face is a big element and a big yeah. part of that fright you know the fact that yeah. they will not show you what he looks like yeah now it's i like saw william shatner he was william shatner yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Um, but the 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 Halloween ends. I see her in the previews. That she, like she's going for her to lift his mask mask off. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys know something I don't know because you, I don't know that she actually got the mask off or not. So you know, it's Jack Elam. <laughs> He's under the mask. <laughs> It is the real William Shatner. He, he's still around. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that, that was uh, in the first one, it was Nick Castle in the costume. Yeah, it's him in the part. It's in the, he's in Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, too. He's the Michael Myers in the, the last two, too. Mm. 
last tutu, you know, because um, I, I, you know, to get his body right, like aging, you would, that, that's really cool. Now I'm sure he, he didn't do half the stuff because like, it looks like, I mean, there's some major stunts going on in it, you know, and it's like, uh, yeah. Um, I thought it was cool, you know, that Nick Castle, he wrote Escape from New York and like The Boy yeah. Who Could Fly and uh, he directed, uh, what's the space movie? Um, Last Starfighter. Oh, he did um, State Town USA too. And we just talked about on when on our last episode with uh, Tommy, we talked about the fog and, and how, you know, John Carpenter uses real life people's names in his character. Yeah, it? yeah it had a character named Nick Castle. The, 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 the name for Tom Atkins yeah. in the fog. Yeah. Hey, you know, Speaking the actor John Carpenter, man. I would easily put him like in my top five directors of all time, you know. If it wasn't yeah. Star Wars or Indiana Jones that I liked, you know, in and the seventies and eighties, it, it was a, always a Carpenter film, you know. Yeah. Escape and, from and New York, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Of course, uh The Fog and uh what well, some of his other ones. Halloween. The, the, they the, live. The, they live. Uh, the thing. I'm all Starman, like Christine. Yeah. <laughs> Starman. Great, I love great that. films. Yeah. I, that, mean, that, I, I would go as far as saying I like him above uh, George Lucas. Yeah. Wow. Okay. His films are pretty awesome. I might like him too better than George Lucas because you know, uh, unless you love Star Wars, I mean, I don't know what else names. I don't know what George Lucas has done. So. I like George was, Lucas <laughs> until. After the 80s. <laughs> so basically the prequel's on. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, you, know, well, you I, mentioned the last Starfighter, you know, Nick Castle. Uh was it is it Lance Guest? Yeah. Was the star that he was in Halloween too. Yeah. He was, was like yep. my boyfriend. Yes. I, I yep. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that was him. Yep, he was the EMT at the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. He looked like my high school boyfriend. Because like um People used to tell he me. Was your, looked, what, what, what? He was your high school boyfriend. He looked like my high school boyfriend. Oh, he looked um, like him. Even my son has seen The Last Starfighter and thinks I look like um, Catherine Mary Stewart in that movie, like from high school, you know, and and the guy, and Lance Guest is in it. And he looked, uh, he had, my boyfriend had the perm, you know, like the dark hair and the, cur you know, the, the Ogilvy home perm, <laughs> you know, like, so that's what Lance <laughs> Guest looked like in the 80s, you know, so. Um, yeah, but the music to Halloween, the, the, the John Carpenter did that, and I have it on a LP record, and like I put it on my in my house, and I have the Halloween music playing in the background, and it and, and I, I so love good. It. Oh that my god, it's so good. No. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Wow. I should have played it. I should have pulled, pulled my record player in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll get dinged for copyright on YouTube though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Pop Ninja disclaimer. Yep. Okay, you don't you don't go for that neither right no can do <laughs> okay well that's that's it patrick patrick what's your all movie? right i think i'm pretty sure i've talked about this film before on one of our regular episodes but uh it's a film Still that Magnolias? i really enjoy and if <laughs> anyone hasn't seen it i think it's uh so underrated you just got to find this film and watch it and it's, uh, let me see what year it's from, uh, 1980, and it's called Fade to Black. This is Eric. <laughs> Eric Benford. Double cross and squeamish body. I go to a lot of movies. It's my thing. <laughs> you know what I do to squeeze? <laughs> Why don't you live in the real world with the rest of us? If you're so smart, Stella, tell me what James Cagney's name was in White Heat. Benford is he's sick in the head. He's like retarded or something. Here's to us. Top of the world. I'm a great admirer. I just wanted to meet you. Happy birthday to you. I once went to three movies every day for a year, and I never missed once. I can't picture the creature who'd want to marry you. Tell me, who is this unlucky girl? Marilyn Monroe. Remember, you, you picked me up hitchhiking. I, I gave you the whole idea for my movie. I've never heard of you. Happy birthday. Huh? Cut it for you. Dear Eric. 
What are you looking at, you creep? But you didn't know what Adolf Hitler's favorite movie was. Broadway Melody, I bet you didn't know that. But what about Cry of Battle and War as Hell? Where were they playing, huh? Eric Benford lives for the movies. Sometimes he kills for them, too. Dennis Christopher, star of Breaking Away, creates an unforgettable portrait of life on the edge of terror. <laughs> Fade to black. Introducing Eric Benford. Happy birthday, sucker. <laughs> star of the silver screen. Master of Disguise. Well, I think he's calling you out. Hop along, Cassidy. Oh, look at this. Minister of Horror. Now in the ultimate performance of murder. This is it. It's Hollywood. You can't touch me. Not now. Not world. Fade to black. Have y'all seen that one? Oh. Who's in oh, it? Oh my goodness. You you are missing it, out. But... This is one that I at least once a year I have to watch it. It's kind of one of those guilty pleasure movies that uh it's just so much fun to watch. Um uh, and uh, let me just read you the description from IMDb because they did a good job. They nailed it. Uh, it says a shy, lonely film buff embarks on a killing spree against those who browbeat and betray him, all the while stalk stalking his idol, a Marilyn Monroe lookalike. And I'm just going to add this, uh, that when he kills his victims, he's always dressed as a different one of his favorite movie characters. Okay. And Kendall, you'll like this because uh, the character in there, he's a big universal monster uh, fan. And two of the kills, one of them, he's dressed like a mommy and the other one, he's dressed like Dracula. But uh, yeah, he goes around dressing like these characters and he's basically a serial killer, but he is a movie fanatic. His whole house, it's uh, just movie posters and standees and uh, lobby yeah, cards and all these collectibles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's almost like my house, except I'm not a serial killer, you know? <laughs> not yet. I mean, I can relate to this guy <laughs> until the killing starts, but uh, but anyway, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you gotta watch it. Uh, I'm just in love with this movie. And it takes place in Hollywood. They're at the Roosevelt Hotel. They're they're just all over it. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, I won't give it away. I was, I was about to blow the ending, but uh, yeah, it's a great, great film. If you've never seen it, uh, it stars Dennis Christopher and uh, he's been in a lot of stuff. The main thing I remember him from was uh, Breaking Away. He was one of the four guys in that movie. He was a little shrimp, Dennis Christopher, but uh, he's also played in like, uh, look up here at my notes, in Deadwood and uh, Freaky Links and uh, on the, the profiler, he had a reoccurring role as a, a sheriff. But uh, it also stars a, another actor that I really love. He's like a B-movie great, and that's Tim Thomerson. And, yeah. and Kendall, I know you know Tim. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's been on like all the Trancers movies, the Doll Man movies, uh, Zone Troopers, Uncommon Valor. He's been a lot of stuff. Uh, and also, this is like the second movie appearance of Mickey Rourke. You know, Mickey plays like a, a just a, a thug in it. He's harassing this main character. But uh, anyway, uh, it's got Gwen Guilford in it. And Billy Ray, you probably know who that is. She was on Chips for a while. Uh, she was in several episodes of Chips. And uh, she even had a, a, a fling with, uh, what's his name, uh, Robert Pine. Oh, really? Contra yeah. Well, he was married, though. Was it his because she made a few appearances on the show. Did, were they married you before? Real life? I'm sorry? In real life. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, in real life, uh, I guess it's while she was on Chips, 
they kind of they kind of had a fling or whatever. Uh, and in fact, in this movie that I'm talking about, um, they had to hide her baby bump because she was pregnant with Chris Pine. Oh, this is Chris Pine's mom. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, she kind of she hooked up with Robert Pine on uh, while she was doing chips. Wow. But uh, it's cool. it's pretty cool uh, movie. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about it. I guess you could tell. I like it, uh, but it's, it was written and directed by a guy named uh, Vernon Zimmerman, and uh, he directed eight movies. And Fade the Black's the only movie I know that I've, that I've seen. I don't even know the other stuff, but uh, but he's written a couple that we probably all know, uh, including uh, Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, and um, Teen Witch. He wrote Teen Witch. So. But I'll tell you, okay, in the movie, uh, Dennis Chris Christopher plays this kid named Eric, and uh, he lives with his disabled aunt, and uh, Eric works for this, it's a film company that uh, they store all these prints of films, and like when a, a theater wants to rent a film, his job is he's got like a little Vespa he rides, and he takes the film and delivers the film reels and the, the posters and lobby cards and all that to the theater, that's his job. But it's a cool uh, company he works for. It's, I mean, everything about this film is just screams me. You know, I, I just love everything about it. Uh, but uh, but one of the guys there at, at his job is Mickey Rourke, and Mickey's always harassing him. And he, he's got a boss that's always harassing him, and his aunt's always harassing him. And he's just this little shriveling guy, and he, he just breaks. Everybody's, you know, bullying him and stuff. And, and then he fa he falls in love with this Marilyn Monroe lookalike that he meets at a, a diner. And uh, w when she rejects him, it, it, it's kind of like the, the last straw. He just breaks and he, he just goes on a killing spree. But it, it is an awesome movie. You got to check it out. And uh, I don't know what else to say about it. But uh, let's see. Uh, I like let's probably look up my notes if I had anything to say about it. But uh yeah, it's, just, you know, never it's, heard it's of it. cool. It's a horror slasher flick, and uh, just absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. If you hadn't seen it, go find it. You'll you like it. I, I swear you will like it. If you don't, I'll give you money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to give away a, um, a one of these movies, you know, for our giveaway, and I don't know if I, I can find any of the three that you guys like. <laughs> Because uh, they're so obscure, you know what I mean. I don't know if they're out on DVD. Obscure like, Halloween. Nobody ever heard. <laughs> That's of not an obscure movie. Like, you know, yeah, well, Halloween, my movie. I meant the three of you. Said the three of us. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Like, well, I'll you tell know. you, is on Blu-ray. Is it? Fade to Black is on Blu-ray. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Mary Lou's got to be on yeah. Blu-ray. Oh, if Mary not, Lou. it's on yeah. Pluto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 yeah. so, okay, then I will give a Blu-ray copy of one of these movies if um if any you know somebody can uh give me a, a code word like uh Halloween, <laughs> you know, so Halloween three for number one, because like this is our third episode of Halloween. No, I just say Halloween. Okay. All right. So if they say Halloween, they get the pick from the four movies and you will give them a... what's one they want. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so you'll get a Blu-ray or a DVD, but what you cannot have is this. <laughs> this is my little fertility idol from Indiana Jones from Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's yeah, a there's... giant boulder behind you. <laughs> yeah. Look out! I've got, first, first one I'm we wearing did. my wrong colored shirt for my Indiana Jones, but uh, I do have my bull whip on my shoulder here. So it kind of blends into the jacket. It's the wrong color too, so. But sorry, it is what it is. I tried. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Anybody else got anything to say to wrap it up? Party on, Lisa. Uh, party on, everybody. Party, and have party on. All right. Look, we, we've all got to do that Brady Bunch Victor. thing. Let's let's look at each other. <laughs> I don't know which direction I'm looking. Where am I? <laughs> look at your four corners. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again for y'all for y'all joining us and talking about your movies. And we always love having you on here. And I want to thank everybody for listening and, and watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.
Have a great Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.